Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my new episode of the tutorial series, The AAA Way. And in this tutorial series, I thought I'd make a quick video and this is specifically for my one subscriber. His name is just, let me see, Richard Daffy. <laughs> and he's been commenting on my videos for quite a while now asking for this specific tutorial and I've promised him quite a bunch of times that I would do it. So this is the result we're trying to aim for. And this is basically done using a control rig. And this is really great because it works and it applies full body IK to the whole body and it accounts for stuff like spine rotation and everything like that. And I really like the system. It's a lot cleaner than the previous system I did and I really prefer this. Okay, so all I basically have right here is I just have a normal deer blueprint and my character is set up very simply, but just for the sake of this tutorial, it's basically just a normal pawn and it has an animation blueprint and it has a locomotion state and a default slot, right, to play some animations. So if you have a character set up, it probably looks similar to this. And what we want to do to achieve IK on this character, we actually need to go ahead and build a control rig. So to build a control rig is not as difficult as you might think. To go and build a control rig, we want to just search control rig. And then you'll see there's a control rig node. Just drag that in there and that in there. And then that alpha value, so we can actually go ahead and change that to a Boolean value. And then this will enable, um, I wanted this control rig to only be enabled if my character is not falling. I don't want any weird like stuff happening. So I have a variable is falling and this is falling variable. You could get off your character and you can get the get movement component. And, oh, oh my goodness, yeah, character movement and is falling, right? So that's super easy to get if you do not have it saved. I already have mine saved, but I'm just going to take my is falling variable and just put a not boolean in there. And while the character is not falling, this control rig needs to be enabled. So if we compile and save, you'll see we get an error. That's because we actually need a control rig, right? We need to go and put it in there, control rig clause. So you're just going to go to your skeletal mesh. In my case, it's SK Deer Stack. And I'm just going to click on it and click Create Control Rig. Okay. So I'm just going to call mine SK New Control Rig because I already made one, but you can call yours whatever you want. And in here, we're going to just set up the basic control rig for the character. So to start with, we're going to make a new variable. And what we want is the feed names, right? Or the poor names, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're just going to make an array of all the feed names. And then we're also just going to make an array of all the feed transforms. So let's put this on transform. And what we need to do next is we're just going to go and fill the default values in there. So if you're using a quadruped, it has four legs, right? So we're just going to add four legs in there. And then we want to go to the skeletal mesh, right? Let me just make sure it's on this one, the deer stack. And I want to go ahead and get the four feet name. So we got the left foot. I can copy bone name and put it in here. And we got the right foot, copy bone names. We can put it in here. And then the next one is the half finger, copy bone name, paste it in there. And then we have the R finger one, copy bone names, put it in there. And that is all you need to do for the bone names, right? So like in normal blueprints, we have a construction event. This will happen when this control rig is initiated. So what we first need to do is we can go and say get feet names and then we can do a for each loop, right? So it looks a little different, but it does the same thing in a control rig. And we can just search for get transform here. And if you take get transform, you can see we can put the type on bone. So 
Let's plug that in there. And then we can actually get the bone transform. So we need to populate this feed transform array. And to populate an array, we just add, use add, the same as in normal blueprints. So let's go and add that. And let's add each of the bone names in here. Okay, that is cool. So we've got our feed names, we've got our feed transform. And your forward solve, we're going to go ahead and add, implement the full body IK. But first we need to do some calculations. So if you watch my other tutorial about leg IK, we did traces from around the feet and we got the ground location and we applied some sort of offset. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're just going to take the feet names and once again, we're just going to say for each of them. And we're going to do the same thing here as well. We get the transform and we put it in there. And then what we're going to do is you're going to just take the feet transforms and use the set at. So this index here, we just want to basically update the feet transform every time forward solve executes. So this is just going to happen all the time. And we want to update this transform. So we need to go ahead and figure out what the new transform is. So to do that, we're going to do a sphere trace by channel. Okay. So to do a sphere trace by channel, we need a start and an end location. And to get the start location, we can just go and take this one and then let's just split this, right? So we've got a translation, rotation and scale. So our translation, we want to add something and then we can expand this and let's add 80. And you'll see exactly why we're doing that now, but we want to add 80 and that will be our start. And let's copy and paste this and take our translation again and then put it at end. And then we want to actually minus 80. So this value is just going to depend on your specific character, but mine is a deer and its paws are pretty long or its legs are pretty long. So you can choose some, try some other values, but these values work really well for me. Okay. Now let's just go and do set at and just expand that one. The rotation will be the same and the scale will be the same. So what we're going to set is the hit location, but the hit location, we actually need to adjust it a little bit. We actually need only need the Z value from the hit location and the rest we will get from translation. So we can also just expand this and then expand this. So the X and Y values will be the same. The Z value is the one we will change. The Z value is the offset up and down. So we don't want to do anything left or right. So we just need to get the Z value. So let's take the Z value and do an add node and then just put that in B to make it easier. And then we will take our Z value from our, our original translation and just add it there. And then we have a result. So let's just look at this result to start with. So let's compile. And then you can just do something here and say add visual debug, add visual debug. And if you compile and save, you should be able to see the visual debug. But we need to connect that pin and then we will see it. Right. So we actually have something going on there. Okay. It's tracing each leg and that is great. So now we have our new locations. So let's actually just do another check. So if this trace doesn't hit, we actually want the legs to be in its most extended position. All we need to do is one last little thing to this setup. Let's just put an if one in here. And then if it is false, right? If it doesn't hit, we want to just pass this translation. That is the leg at its most extended point. How far ever the leg can go down and how far ever the trace goes down. So minus minus 80, but yours might be minus 50. And you'll see at the end, you can play around with the values to make it um, perfect. And if it's true, we want to just use this heat location. And then once again, we can break this and then just instead of B, 
we put it in there. Cool. So this is all complete now. And the next thing we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and do the actual full body. So we've got a bunch of transforms and now we can actually do the full body IK on the character. So if it, nothing is making sense yet, it will all just work <laughs> after this and you'll see why. So we can do a full body IK node here. And the root is going to be your pelvis bone, right? Um, so just make sure you put it on pelvis there. And then we want to go and do four effectors. We want to actually just use these bone names. So we just need bone names. So we can get or at, right? Forgot. For some reason it's at here. I don't know why Unreal changes the naming conventions between different ones, but normally in array you get, and then we will just use it there. So do the same four times for each effector and just use an element number or at index one, two, and three. And then we paste it in there, we paste it in there, and we paste it in there. And then we also need to do the same for the transforms, right? These transforms we actually just calculated. So let's do at, sorry, <laughs> and put it in there and repeat this process again four times. Okay, so let's do element number one, two, and three. Put it in the transform. Wait, there's one too many effector here. Just three. So this is effector number zero, and then one, and then two, and then number three. Okay, sorry about that. So now technically it should all work. There's something else we need to set here and that is the root behavior. We just want to put this on free. Okay, so if we compile and save, this should actually give us a pretty decent result. And we might need some fine tuning to, you know, define how the bones will bend and stuff. But for now, this should actually work. So let's go and test this out. So this is the SK new control rig. So I'll just go and search for new control rig and put it in there. And if I compile and save, I can go here and my animation blueprints already applied here and I can just press simulate and let us just check if this is working and you can see this is working right maybe this is good enough for you already uh, maybe you are lucky um, and this doesn't look too bad right so I'll show you now how to just um, go and uh, play, uh, play around a little bit with the bones to make sure you get good results um, let's just do something like this. Put it on a nice little uphill. And then let's play it here. You can see this works great, right? Yeah, and this pretty much um, <laughs> sums up the tutorial, really. But let me just show you um, if, for in case, your bones is bending a little bit weird, right? Um, there's some stuff you can do to make your bones just bend perfectly. And it's the same as my other tutorial, if you've seen that. So let me just go ahead and open that control rig here. And what you'll see here is we can do bone settings. And bone settings we can use to apply to any bone that is being affected by the IK. So let's say we just add two bone settings here. And then maybe we can do one on like the forearm and the right form of forearm. And what I what you can do is you can go set settings like the rotation system stiffness, the position stiffness, all that. But what I like to use is preferred angles, and maybe just use like a preferred angle of like 30. And then let's do the same here and put it on 30. 
And this will basically just force the bones to bend in a certain way, right? So I want it to bend like that. And if we go here and let's press play, you'll see my bones is bending a little bit more forward. So that's how you're going to go ahead and fine tune your own special character, right? So you can see it works really well. And then here will be a point where your character will slide off. But you will have something in your character movement component to um, set like a max walk angle. So you'll probably never go on this angle. And if you're going to go on this angle for some reason, you probably have some sort of falling animations and stuff that will play anyways, right? So that is really cool. And I hope you guys get the result you need. Let me know if you want me to make a video about anything else specifically. Thank you so much for watching.